Well, this is exciting. I got access to Gen 1, the new video generator from Runway ML. So today I'm gonna to take you through it, how to use it, what to expect from it, and what kind of surprised me about it as well. So Gen 1 is a video stylizer that takes the input of any video that you supply it and applies the look of any image or text prompt that you also feed it. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So does this mean that whole corridor crew anime video is completely outdated? Now let's take a look. So first off, if you haven't signed up for the waitlist, you should do so at the link provided below. As far as how I got access, I did sign up pretty early uh, to the waitlist, but honestly, it was just from hanging out in the general channel of the Discord and being nice that got me in. So if you're still on the wait list, um, yeah, you know, go hang out in the general channel. Here's the thing though, don't be a jerk or entitled about it. I've seen a ton of users coming in and their first post is, where do I download this? How do I download this? Um, you know, ease yourself in, be cool, be personal, be helpful. Uh, golden rule applies. The mods are watching and you know, if you're courteous, you might just end up with early access. Okay, so diving in, once you do have access on the Runway Discord, a channel called Gen 1 will open up. So I know the whole Discord thing is gonna annoy some of you. There is no web UI yet. Video generation is not private yet. It's sort of one big long feed, which I actually think is kind of cool because then you can actually get some ideas from other users that are generating videos as well. Although we can't send the bot to channels like you know you can in Midjourney, um, you do have the thread option, which is handy because it sort of keeps your work all in one area. The system is very simple. You just at the Gen 1 bot with a video and an image that you want to stylize, hit enter and you're off. You can also supply Gen 1 with a video and a text prompt and you will get a stylized output to that. What you can't do is provide Gen 1 with an image and then say animated. I did see a few people doing that in the channel. It's really early, I get that, but you know, but that's not possible, that's not what Gen 1 is. We do have some parameter modifiers that we can work with. Midjourney users will recognize those as the dash dash, though the commands are obviously completely different than Midjourney would be. Very useful ones that I found so far are the CFG underscore scale, uh, which defaults at 8.5 and you can take that up to 12. That enhances how much the text or image prompt is taken into account, the depth blur level and the CFG temporal scale. So obviously there's a pretty big list of commands here. I'm gonna be going through and experimenting with it and I'm gonna show some results in an upcoming video. So in terms of limitations, Gen 1 is limited to three second clips, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, remember we're super early in and I'm sure within a few months, we'll be looking at five seconds, 10 seconds and on and on. To be honest, getting started three seconds isn't the worst. Uh, I mean, you can string together like 10 three second clips and have a 30 second short film. The other limitation is that your total file size can only be eight megs unless you have Discord's Nitro feature, in which case you're looking at 100 megs. So basically you're not gonna be uploading, you know, 4K files or, you know, red raw files or anything like that. Okay, so let's take a dive in now and see what's possible with Gen 1. So my initial test was based on something that I saw in a demo video in which somebody took books, stacked them on a table and then created a cityscape out of them. So I took a couple of cookbooks that we had around. A shout out to Milk Street, by the way. They have a channel on YouTube. Um, if you're into cooking or just want some good food, go check out Milk Street. They've got some really good stuff. Um, some thermoses and some lunch boxes and I just quickly shot uh, you know a small rotation of them and then applied a cyberpunk city on it that I generated in mid journey. Um, the output was interesting. <laughs> um, it grabbed the colors of the reference image um, and sort of just applied it sort of everywhere. Um, it was interesting to note that in the book here there's this you know circular, pattern, which is the plate on the actual book. So um, I think that if you're going to do something like this, you probably want to have cardboard boxes or things that aren't patterned or textured. It is cool that we ended up with a city background as well, but the glow is kind of all over the place. And if you're a little underwhelmed, stay tuned because I've got another take on this where I'm starting to dial things in and we get a much better result. So I tried a one second shot of just myself. Why, hello there. And applied it to a plushie doll, which we had, and it outputted this monstrosity. So I've got some more experimenting that I need to do on that front. So I think this is a good place to stop down for a split second and talk about how this is going to take a lot of tests on your behalf in order to get the results that you're looking for. Uh, one of the things that I sort of retroactively went back and looked at was one of the more impressive uh, YouTube shorts demos that I saw. And even in that video, the filmmaker was very upfront in saying that it took hundreds of tests in order to get 
the desired output that appeared in the final product. So when you get Gen 1 access, please look at it as a platform to experiment and play with. So my initial tests were just done on my phone. I wanted to see what things might look like if we brought some stock images in and applied some styles on those to see, you know, what would happen. Um, this was interesting. Got a overhead city shot, uh, stock image again. Um, I'm actually not sure what city that is. If, if you know what city that is, let me know in the comments. Went through and applied that initial cyberpunk city look onto it and ended up with this. But then I got to wondering how it would look if the image reference that I was feeding more closely was angled with the video. So I went back to Mid Journey and rolled up this image, which, you know, angle wise is not perfect, but the output video is definitely much closer to what I was looking for. So that's something that you should really think about uh, when you're providing reference images to Gen 1. Next up, I tried a straight text prompt. Um, this was a video against stock of a dude surfing. And I simply fed the video to Gen 1, at Gen 1, and text prompted it Lego bricks. And this was the output, which is okay. Um, I don't know if it quite looks like Legos, but you know, it's it works. And just to compare and contrast, I grabbed this image, uh, which is, you know, actual Legos, and we ended up with this, which is definitely closer to the look that I was going for. I think that this is one where if we play with the temporal scale and the CFG scale, um, it's going to get a lot closer to that Lego look. Um, so again, I'll be messing with that through the week. Uh, next up was a really cool one that I saw. This is not my video. I just happened to catch this on the community feed. Um, so the original video is this dude. I, I don't know who he is, um, which he then paired with an image of Han Solo. And the output was this, which I was pretty impressed with. I think that really captured the style. So I gave it a shot and mine did not come out as great. So I'm gonna keep playing around with it. I think that there's definitely something there. I just have to figure out what styles look good on faces or I should say what styles look good on my face. Apparently Gen 1 just, you know, it does not like my face, which is fine. I totally get it. I have to wake up and look at it every day too. I don't need the AI judging me, okay? So going back to the idea of having the image style reference the video, um, I grabbed a screen grab from this video, took it over to Mid Journey, fed that in as an image reference and just simply gave it the prompt anime. Mid Journey spit this back out at me, which is a pretty cool image. So going back to Gen 1, I then fed it the original video and the Mid Journey reference image, and this was the output. And that I think is super dope. Um, it's only three seconds long, but it's pretty cool. There's some weird frame stuff going on with the output video, but that's probably because the source video like sort of had that weird frame rate. Actually, I kind of like it. It sort of makes it look like it's stop motion animation. Yeah, I actually really dig this as a look. So that is something you might want to think about doing Take a screen grab of your source video, drop it over to Mid Journey with whatever text prompts you want, and then hop it back over to Gen 1 and see what happens. So ultimately, is this the future of animation and video? You know, I, I actually would say yes, it is. It's not the ultimate future of it. It's just a path on that road. And this is just the first step. So it's super exciting. It's really cool. Um, I can't wait till everybody has access and we're all playing with it. And I can't wait to see what you guys end up generating with it. If you enjoyed this, please do hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, the following videos, I'm going to be deep diving into Gen 1 and I would love to see you there. So until next time.